Now, I'm familiar with recalcitrant, that is, stubborn places, having mm -hmm. had plenty in myself. And what I'm telling you is what has worked consistently for me. As soon as I do the rocking of the tongue mudra and get that going, then I bring my attention to some stuck place in the spine and synchronize the tongue mudra shift with the shift at the level of that stuck place. Okay, let me, I can try that now and see if okay. it causes any changes. And it'll also show me how quickly you're moving because it does require a slow down turtle wise sometimes So <clears throat> during that, I, I made so, I managed to get some changes, but mm -hmm. it feels as though there's a part tilting my head to this side mm -hmm. as a blockage, and feels like there are multiple aspects of those blocked that blockage that I could, cannot get done unless I fix all the other parts first. Well, this is the most efficient way to fix all those other parts. May I check some items? Yes. When you were doing tongue mudra, was your nasal cavity dilated? As much as it can. I'm a bit congested now, but... Well, it's a yeah. feeling. Yes, uh, it did okay. feel. Okay. And were you breathing across the place in your nasal cavity that got sensitized? At the start, yes. Okay. The, the sensation kind of dwindles as okay. I focus my attention elsewhere. Okay, so you reinstate that when you okay. lose it because that breathing is a major assist to the release. And before you go into practicing, there's the third item. To get at the spine with tongue mudra, the tongue has to be curled sufficiently, tip back. Mm -hmm. Is that the shape you were in? I didn't sense um. it that way. Uh, my tongue was about halfway between the back of my throat and my teeth. About halfway. Well, the feeling I'm looking for is that you get sensation from the tongue mudra at the back of the throat and even behind the nose. That's the first location before it starts traveling down the spine. so that the location that gets sensitized is toward the back in the nasal cavity. Well, I got more then, but... Oh. Yeah, as you can see, it takes a while. It does. But you know what? We've been at this for 16 minutes. 16 minutes isn't much of a while, consider, <laughs> considering how fast this is compared to other approaches. This is major quick. Now, now that you've done this a bit, I can show you how to do search and rescue. Search and rescue, what's that? Well, it's the way I use the term. You search for the trouble and you rescue yourself from it. Mm -hmm. You've seen the medical caduceus symbol with the, the ball on top and the wings and the snakes. Snake. That, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's from an ancient Hindu symbol for the, the subtle esoteric energy or sensation anatomy and the zigzagging of the snakes as they crisscross back and forth, uh -huh. points to the movement that you can do with the tongue mudra, in mm -hmm. which once you get the rocking going, and it's just easy, you're not having to put a lot of attention in it, you can then 
bring your feeling attention down the spine in that kind of side to side wavy motion mm -hmm. and it will reveal to you the places where you're stuck that's the search part okay the one one issue yeah whenever in order to get something unstuck it feels as though my my problems are a result of a chronic imbalance so if i get one mm -hmm. part unstuck another part also has to be unstuck yeah i'm not sure where that other part is if i can get the first part oh that's why you do search and rescue you find one part i gave you the search part mm -hmm. by going down the spine in that s kind of or zigzag kind of a shape you can locate places that feel basically tired or sore. Those are the jammed places. Uh -huh. Once you've located one, instead of continuing down along the zigzag, you do this kind of shape right at that location, finding the identical location left and right. So if you find it on the right side and you go swing over to the left, find the same spot on the left. And that corresponds to the rocking of the floating pallet. No, so when you say, you say the same spot, that means same in this plane, or could it be at a different level of the spine? No, it's exactly on the same plane. Okay. And it's this movement. You see this kind of infinity symbol I'm drawing here? Uh -huh. It's a horizontal shape. And it might be right over here that you have the little tired spot. So when you go to the other side, you find the mirror image of the tired spot and you cycle left and right while doing the rocking of the floating pallet left and right in sync with what you're sensing in the spine at that point you'll feel that one that a shift wants to occur that's the reason for doing the search and rescue it'll show you the places that are most ready to change in fact some may change instantly just by being passed across in mm. that zigzagging shape they a little crunch and a shift Others are more stuck, and once you locate them, then you have to do that infinity symbol left and right, just like in the caduceus. Mm -hmm. And with the tongue mudra, the rocking, synchronized with the left and right of your attention in that stuck place. So they are happening together. They're happening at the same time. And that combination induces changes to occur. If you were to get them all, all at once, I would be surprised and more power to you. Mm -hmm. It's my experience that I get a bunch and then I may, encountering, may encounter something that's just too stuck to change, even if I go really slowly. So I leave it alone because I know I can come back to it on another occasion fresh after having integrated what has already changed. These aren't mechanical changes. These are awakening of sensory awareness and control of the tension at those locations. Once that's occurred, it doesn't go back. It may be influenced by other places, but the, you, you never lose the control you developed. You might, it might diminish a little bit, but you never lose it. It's never gone. It's always substantially reduced and you just go through and clean up stuff and okay. it's massive what you can get done with that okay but you've got to have the tongue positioned back enough to get the spine you've got to get the nasal cavity dilated and breathe across the sensitized place then you've got some juice to direct at the places you locate going down the caduceus Okay, I did notice some changes there. Ready for the next one? Okay. A lot of times the key to releasing those places lower down the spine isn't at those places at all. It's in the cranium. The cranium. Yep. And so when you do the rocking tongue mudra at the beginning, you start aiming toward the front. Find something on the left side 
and then rock and find the identical location on the right side and do that same kind of serpentine movement in your cranium from front to back and then down. You'll find all these little corners in your cranium, in the mouth, in the nose, and further up and like into the brain case. Mm -hmm. And by locating left and right, a lot of those things will just easily let go and spontaneously changes occur lower down the spine. Mm -hmm. because the origin of it wasn't where the sensation of it was. It was in the cranium itself. Okay. So you can just ream the bejesus out of this whole thing and mm -hmm. clean up huge numbers of things. And my experience is when I've changed something like that, it's gone. Maybe something right next to it may show up because that was part of the the configuration that complex configuration you were referring to mm -hmm. and you've just got to go after the neighbors then but i mean it's just like i've been undergoing a, a progression of very deep changes working with this stuff that never got addressed before and it shifts and it's all this new stuff is being revealed i've described it to you like when i talked about the ribs being folded back on one side around the vertebrae Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that was one of those things, and on one occasion it just went brrrp, and a whole bunch of rib heads and vertebrae corrected in one sweep. There's just a, like an unsuspected huge lot of crap, particularly I found surrounding the heart region, that is the spine directly behind the heart. Mm -hmm. Yes, lots of stuff, and it, one should not be discouraged to find more stuff showing up. That's what's been in there. It's just been unconscious. It's been amnesic. But when you clean it up and those changes keep occurring, and they do, it just, it's a massive cleanup. Massive. So don't be discouraged if you feel like there's just a lot of stuff that's complicating it. Yes, that's so. And I found this to be quite effective in going after this huge number of complications. <sighs> yeah, there there is a lot. There's so much wrong. <laughs> now remember, this is 21st century Earth. Okay, humans are <laughs> not very far along, really. <laughs> it, has it ever been better? 